Hello, welcome to a Tinge Ginge. Now today I'm going to be doing a video on a, a thing that I posted on my Instagram um, a few days ago. I've had quite a few people message me about it, asking um, whether I'm going to be making it, whether I can do it for different size tubs. Um, so I was going to do a video on it before, but I think I need to do a bit more of an in-depth video on it. So I'm going to be covering that today. It might be quite a long video because of everything that goes on with this. Um, but it's just going to show what I actually have to do to modify my tub. So I've currently, if you see the rack behind me, I've made dividers for this rack. Um, if you do follow me on Instagram, you would have seen it already. Um, so I'll quickly give you a view of what it looks like now. But basically, I'm going to show you everything I've done to make it. Um, and yeah, if it is something you are interested in purchasing, um, I, I am able to do it, but you've just got to be aware of the costs. Um, and also, these dividers that I'm making are meant for these tubs specifically. So all my measurements are for these specific tubs. So you'd have to, have to go and buy out these tubs yourself, or if you wanted me to make them for yourself, I'd need to have the dimensions, everything super accurate, like within half a millimeter, because if they're made slightly wrong, then they're just either not going to fit your tub or you're not going to have the correct, uh, correct tools to put it together. So um, it, it'd probably be best for people only in the UK. Um, obviously, if I do ship to the US, there's going to be extra costs with shipping and things like that. But anyway, we'll get into the video. I'll show you what I do just so you can see everything that I've done to make it. Um, and then if you want any other information or everything else, you can just message me and, and find out. So let me quickly show you the tubs that I've done so far. So this is one of the tubs, so if you haven't seen any of my videos before, this is the uh, racking system I have for my sort of hatchlings slash grow-ons. Um, they're brilliant little tubs, I think they're 20 litre tubs that I've bought from B&Q. They're about five for each, and if I show you up here, they're all sort of completely sealed. Um, there's no way for the snake to get out. And you can see that I've got something a little bit different. I don't run heat mats, I actually run heat cable. Um, I will be doing a video on this in a future project because I'm currently in the process of making an aluminium rack um, just so I can put my sort of, I want to keep these as my divided tubs so they are staying as my sort of hatchlings. Um, they, the divider can be taken out to be used uh, as an actual grow on tub, but because of the amount of snakes I, I think I will be producing uh, soon, um, I do need quite a lot of tubs. This is a rack of 40, and with these little dividers that I've made, um, it does turn into a rack of 80. And as you can see, it, it doesn't take up a lot of space at all, to be honest. Um, it's absolutely ideal for what I want. So this is how the tub looks on the outside. Um, the lighting in here isn't great, so I'm gonna try and get the best view I can. But starting off, you can see I've got like, these little, you've got these little pegs that come through the tub, uh, and that's what actually secures the, uh, the divider in place. So I have actually had to drill these tubs, which I'm not too bothered about. Um, I did it on one as a test. I mean, there, there are five of us, so if I break one, it's not a huge problem. Um, but yeah, they're five for each, so I did have to drill the outside of the tub. If you've seen these videos already, um, you'll know that I have actually modified them slightly. I've had to make a, a little hole in the top there and that's just that when I close the tub, that peg can go up and that secures that drawer in place, so that's not going anywhere. Um, originally, I did have issues with the snakes um, getting into the back of this, they were getting the nose down the back of the drawer and then pushing the tub forward, and then once the tub was forward, they're coming to the front, getting the nose here and pushing that lip forward. So, um, I didn't want like a big bar. Originally, I had tape over this to hold it in place until I could come up with a solution. Um, and this is the best thing I can come up with. And it suits me down to the ground because you can see I've got pegs all over the place. Um, OCD and all that being there. But the, the pegs are a system that I use anyway. I use it even for my adult rack and everything else. So it was ideal for me to do that at the time. So yeah, that's how the, uh, the tub is kept in place. And if I take that out and show you the divider, you can actually see this is one of my clutches that I've just had. This pairing was a uh, pastel blackhead hit hypo bred to a pastel hypo. Um, did quite well. Uh, I didn't really get many hypo animals from this, but I managed to get the one I wanted, which was this guy, which I believe is a super pastel blackhead hypo. Um, over the moon with that. And I believe this is a, a super pastel blackhead, 100% het hypo um, and they both are female so they're both going to be staying here um, I need to try and get some more uh, blackhead stuff to hold back so yeah but you can see I've got them on the coconut bed in and this divider works absolutely perfectly but I've got my light box set up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly bring these over to the light box hopefully the camera can focus a bit more um, and then I'll just talk you through it a little bit better and here it is in the light you can see these snakes they look absolutely incredible in this light <clears throat> 
amazing. Love these. I can't wait for these to get some size from. They're going to look absolutely incredible once they get bigger. But yeah, this is the divider that I've made. Um, I've had them. I, I had this made already. I thought it was going to be perfect. So you can see there, the plastic divider doesn't go um, all the way to the top like the little orange bracket doesn't go to the top. And that's because I wanted sort of airflow. So this central piece of acrylic doesn't touch the top of the box, but obviously I don't have any vent holes in these boxes. So I wanted as much airflow as possible. So I didn't want to make that completely sealed up. Um, this end, you can see the little orange bit does go all the way to the top. And you can see I've had to add a little cap onto that. Um, I did originally make a huge batch load of these little orange bits. Um, and once I, I printed them and put them in place, they seem to be working well. And then one day I was pulling the drawers out and these two were cuddling. And over here as well, um, these two here had somehow managed to get into the same tub. Sorry, I thought he disappeared then, he's down there. But yeah, these two managed to get into the same tub as well. Um, <clears throat> and after watching them, what they were doing is they were actually being able to squeeze through this little gap because obviously there's a gap here between this and the top there's a little tiny gap at the back so that was just big enough for them to squeeze their head and body through so you can see that I've had to put a little cap on the top um, I didn't want to throw these away because I thought it's just going to be a waste of plastic so I've redesigned the next batch to actually go all the way to the top like I said I've only got enough for about oof, five or six of these tubs so I can use these for the tubs already and then when I just print the new batch um, I'll just be able to put the next slot in and they'll, they'll fit perfectly but I just didn't want to waste the plastic so I just made a little extender for the top bit there and uh, that just seems to work perfect. So that's the divider in itself, this acrylic I buy in sheets and then I just cut it down to the right size basically, um, nothing too difficult with that. With this I've just cut it with a handsaw, I was going to cut on the band so I've got but I was just worried about this acrylic cracking and chipping because it is quite brittle. Um, and yeah, I just didn't want to waste it because it is quite expensive. So the way I've actually secured it in place, like I said, is there's these two little pins there. Um, and it's basically like a, a friction type fit. So these just literally, these aren't fixed in. Oh, he's gonna have me. These aren't fixed in. These literally just placed in there. Same with this one. And then this sheet of acrylic that goes down the middle goes in and that actually tensions the tub and holds that all in place so it's easy to take out and clean easy to remove um, if I wanted to turn this from a sort of hatchling tub into a grow-on tub I could literally just take that out and yeah there will be holes in the back front but end of the day it doesn't really matter the reason I just wanted to keep as less holes in it as possible is because I wanted to keep the humidity up so you can see down the the hot spot you can see it's bone dry and then as you come to the front you can see there is a little bit of humidity built up on that front there which I'm more I think that's absolutely perfect um, the humidity never really seems to go past these bowls it's normally just in this general area um, and these are the little bowl holders that I made of uh, Paul Milner over at um, Urban Restrictors does these as well that's where I've got the idea from them from um, I have modified them slightly uh, let me just show you that this is my little adaption I made um, I just made some little feet 3d printed feet that go on the bottom um, and the whole idea of that was to sort of just to make them a little bit more sturdy just to stop them from being knocked over now if you're keeping animals on paper they work absolutely brilliantly but if you keep them on the coconut um, because you can see there's a slight gap underneath if a little bit of coconut gets underneath there the snake moves around the coconut then wedges the bowl up they then knock the bowl over so for these particular tubs this little guy here he, he really wants to eat my face right now um, but yeah I'm changing these little tubs again slightly so uh, the feet work for just paper um, the bigger bowls like for the adults they work absolutely brilliantly but if you're going to be keeping on coconut um, it's not really that great so what I actually plan on doing is I'm not going to tell you actually I'm going to save it for another video but there's going to be a way for these bowls to be secured to this and then easily removed and that way I can actually just sort of put them in place keep them there the snakes won't be able to move them and I can just remove them when I want to clean them and pop them back so that's the next thing I'm working on I've got a few little more tweaks to try and work out where I'm going to put certain things but that is the next stage and then as well um, someone did actually comment on my YouTube video um, on my Instagram sorry about actually making hides for these little guys like a little a little piece that's going to come over here so they can actually go into a hide I have thought about that um, it's, it's quite tricky when it comes to hides because 
If I was to make a hide for this, the normal way people do, I'm gonna use a pen because this guy's gonna bite me, is they'd normally make a slot in here and then they'd have a piece of acrylic which would slot down and connect to this. It's fine, it's a good design, but for me, <clears throat> I'm not really a fan of that because if I wanna sort of take the drawer out, I don't have to keep pulling that out, putting it back, and especially if you've got coconut in the bottom, if you try and put that slot back down, um, you've then got to try and move all the coconut out of the way to try and get it flat so it fits in. That's just too much drama for me, I, I can't be dealing with that. So I have got a design which goes separately on each side, so you can remove each side separately and it just goes back. Um, it will sit just above the coconut as well, so you don't have to worry about sort of nestling it down into coconut. And again, it's going to be this nice glossy black, hopefully, it's going to be easy to remove. Um, and if it does work, I might be able to not put these little caps on, and it'll be a case of literally just I'm not going to say too much because I've still got some designing to do, but yeah, that's the overview of the top. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to quickly run through exactly how I put it all together. Um, just so you can see if this is something that you would be interested in. Like I said, it, it does involve drilling, but you're, you're gonna see that in the video, so we're gonna get straight into building it. So this is the, the drawer once it's pulled out. Um, yeah, so this is where we're gonna be putting the holes. There are gonna be holes in the front, and there's gonna be holes in the back. Um, the best way I found to sort of measure this out was while I was actually 3D printing the brackets, um, I actually just 3D printed this back bit so that I could use that as a guide. So this is how that looks. So every time I put that in place, I can literally just mark those holes and I know exactly where I'm gonna put the uh, put the, the dots to actually drill. Um, I've marked the black bit at the bottom, just so I know that that bit actually sits flush with the bottom. That's just my benefit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I've just got some, some masking tape here. With the masking tape, I'm gonna put that down the middle. I'm just gonna use that to draw on. It doesn't have to be too accurate when you do the masking tape bit. Um, I literally just want to whack that on there. And that's just so I can actually put my mark on there so I know where to drill. <coughs> I'm going to do that for the back and the front. This just does, this needs to be roughly placed. It doesn't need to be exact because it's, it's just as long as it's in that general middle spot. So once I'm there, so what I'm actually going to do is obviously the holes need to be centre. So I could just guess it, but OCD, I can't do that, so I'm actually going to have to measure from side to side. Once I've measured them spots from there to there, I'll put some marks in, um, and yeah, then we can go from there. So that's the lines drawn on the center line. Uh, the next thing I've got to do is just using these guides that I've printed, um, I'll line that up with the base, and then it's just a case of getting those holes in the middle of those holes. So if I zoom in, um, you can see there the line passes through the middle of the holes. I'll just make a little cross there um, And then that should give me my my center hole to actually drill So once we're there, just need to make sure it's lined up properly Having OCD really doesn't help, but I suppose it does in a way. It just means you're going to do it properly But it just takes you a little bit longer So Done those marks And then I'm going to do the same for the back um, the back's a little bit difficult to do just because of the way that it is. Um, I can't put this plastic underneath that lip uh, just because it's a little bit too long so I've just got to sort of put the plastic in place, bend it and then mark two holes for where it's going to go. So those are the little marks there. I'm um, working really bad light but you can see there, they're the two marks. So. I've got two different size drills for this. Um, first of all, I want to do just a pilot hole, so I'm going to do just a small sort of, I think it's like a, a two and a half millimeter drill bit. It's not going to focus, it's so small, but I'm going to use that just to make the pilot holes first, and afterwards I'm going to go through with the larger drill. And this drill is actually big enough for the pegs that actually go in the back to hold it. So let's get those drilled. Um, it's really easy to do, to be honest. It's, uh, Basically, you just need to have confidence, really. Um, like I said, this, these tubs are quite cheap, so I, I can pick them up fairly cheap, but um, it's always good to sort of have a little practice on something completely different. Like, if you've got some spare boxes that are broken you're not using, um, just have a little practice, because this stuff can be quite brutal at times, and if you sort of try drilling too hard, then you can end up splitting and cracking, and that's the last thing that you want to do. So, 
All I'm going to do is I'm literally just going to place these on, on the marks, drill through, um, and then go through with a bigger one afterwards. Now for all the DIY people out there that are screening me through the TV saying, oh, there's this way and that way of doing it, I don't really care. I'm doing it the way I want to do it because this is I feel confident. So please don't leave me messages down, down below because I will just delete them. So now that I've gone through that smaller piece, um, I'm going to switch to the larger drill bit. Because I've made that pilot hole, um, this drill should go through nice and easy and uh, I shouldn't risk cracking it basically. So, For the sake of saving yourself a few seconds, it's better to take the longer route um, rather than, I could just go straight through this, but you would probably skip, drill and crack it and stuff. So for the extra little bit of work, it's just worth it. Just take pride in what you do basically. So that's drilled, I'm going to take the tape off and then hopefully we should have some perfect holes. Look at that. Let me get the other side off. Check out them holes, they almost look professional. Camera really doesn't want to focus. There you go, look at that. Crisp. That really makes my OCD happy. So yeah, they're the holes that we've drilled. Um, got them on both sides now. I'm just going to get this little peg out because I'll be using that. So that's basically where the holes need to go. Um, it's where the, the pins are going to sit in. You can see the pins, they just they, they don't fit in snug. Um, I wanted a little bit of leeway just because the 3D printer isn't 100% accurate. So it's got a little bit of wiggle room just in case when it prints the holes on the actual back of the brackets here and here, just in case they aren't exactly where they need to be. So. Um, yeah, just a little bit of wiggle room just makes it all all that little bit more safer to use So now that this is drilled um, We can get rid of that the next stage is to make the actual brackets So when the brackets are finished uh, printing this is how they look on the 3d printer um, I will chuck in some footage of this just because it's it's quite cool to watch um, I'll try and get a time-lapse of it just so you can see but I use some software on my iPad um, I literally just, just mess about on my iPad all day long, just come up with different ideas. I'll quickly print one. If that doesn't work, I'll change the idea. This is probably the 20th idea I've come up with now. Um, just changing it over and over again. Originally, these pegs that I've got, um, I wanted to make this as one whole piece, so they were already in the back, and they'd print up like this. But I had all sorts of issues with structural issues with these actual brackets. Um, this bit here where it's rounded, the two little rounded ends there, um, I've actually had to make them bigger because if you squeeze on it, they'd snap off. Um, you know these snakes, they can be quite strong, so I needed to make something that was durable. So one, they couldn't break it, and two, if they did break it, I didn't want them to injure themselves on it. So I needed to try and make it as bulletproof as possible. Um, so yeah, this is how it ends up printing. Um, you do a little bit of cleanup work on it, but that's like anything with 3D printing, you've always got to do cleanup work. So once you finally get all this stuff off, um, you're left with this. This is how it looks. I've cleaned up all the edges, um, the holes on the back there. I've sort of I've opened them up a little bit more, just so that the pegs can go in. And then the pegs are quite fiddly. You can see how small they are. They're tiny, but they go into the back of that. And I just super glue them into the back. Um, I use this normal. Gorilla Glue um, Super Glue Gel, and that stuff seems to do business. They don't come out of there. And uh, like I said, you're not ever putting a lot of force on this, so um, there's not not any risk of it coming apart, really. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these glued in, um, get this one cleaned up, get that all set up to go, and then I'll show you how they go into the top. So I finally got those pegs glued in place. Um, that's perfectly fine. You see how much they stick out. They stick out a fair bit. That's because I wanted a bit of wiggle room. Just when you open the tub. Um, I just, if that plastic flexes a little bit, I just didn't want the plastic to come away too much from one of these pops out. So I've glued them in there. They're nice and secure. They're not getting anywhere and they've got enough to stick through for support. Um, I've also got the plastic. Um, I've pre-cut this uh, just because it, you don't want to see me cutting a bit of plastic. But I literally just use a handsaw for cutting this. Um, nothing special. But yeah, you don't, you don't want to see that. It's, it's pretty simple stuff. You just got to take it slow when you cut this. Um, try not to cut it in one big hit. And you, you, rather than keeping the saw at a high angle, I tend to keep the saw at a low angle. That way you've got no chance of the teeth catching the plastic. If you, if you cut stuff, you'll, you'll understand. And I, I suggest practicing before you do it on the piece you actually want. But um, yeah, so that's the plastic. 
before we go any further, I've just got a little bit of ASMR for you people that, that enjoy that sort of thing. So when you get a brand new phone or anything like that, it's just that little, that little bit of peel in there. It's literally like the best bit of this stuff, but it's horrible on the other side. So you get this side and it just, love that especially how clean look at those lights in there so they're the lights that I use um, so when I do all my egg cuttings and everything else these are the LED lights you can see it's got like blues greens reds whites and that's because this is actually for um, a marine aquarium I'm trying to get some new lights I just can't decide what I want but that's why a lot of my lighting tends to look a little bit weird and I get a lot of glare from a lot of the uh, the egg cuttings as well and that's that's why how cool does that look oh there you go there's an even brighter view of it that was well cool. But yeah, so there you go. Peeling the other side of this off is never the same. Um, for some reason, this side's always nasty. There, but yeah, look at that. I love the glossy black as well. Um, I'm actually thinking about doing my photographs on this from now on. Um, so now I've got to play around with it. I've got to get some special lighting so it doesn't cause too much glare off of this. But imagine the snake sound that with the reflection. It just oh, it looks incredible. So. Now we've got that covered, let me quickly grab the tub. So all I'm going to do is with the little pegs, they literally sit in the little holes. So you can see there it goes through. I've measured it perfectly, which makes me extremely happy. Now again, you can see this doesn't go all the way to the top, the plastic will stick up. So I've made some little caps that I can just glue onto the top of there um, and that will just stop the snakes from going around. Um, but yeah, not too worried about that. So then once that's in, I can take my middle, my piece of acrylic that's going to go down the middle and that's measured. I've made it in a way it's just enough that it just tensions the tub and it's a nice snug fit. Now it doesn't bow the tub out in any way. You can see if I, if I can move that, it's a slight bit of movement there. So it doesn't bow the tubs in any way. Um, the bottom of these tubs are bowed but I think that's just because of the make of it. It's a little bit of a bulge at the bottom but that doesn't bother me. And there you can see it's a nice tight fit. wiggles um, and yeah really really happy with it and when it comes to cleaning it's just a case of just sliding it out taking these these two bits off and these are all cleanable you can wash these in in water and soap and I'm um, I'm not too sure about some uh, antibacterial sprays I know if you put alcohol on these um, it can dissolve it so um, a lot of time I probably will just use these with water, hot water and, and clean them that way. Um, I have cleaned them before in like a little tester, gone dirty and they, they clean up really well. So um, yeah, spot on. And again with the plastic, I wouldn't use a scour on this because if you use a scour on this, you are going to scratch it. It probably will pick up some scratches along the way, um, but that again, that doesn't really bother me. It's, as long as it does the job at the end of the day, I'm, I'm not too bothered. But yeah, you don't want to be using anything rough on this, literally just just the sponge on this side so that's basically how the tub goes together it's quick and simple it's easy to do um, the reason I, I wanted to go down this line like I said was if I had this piece in the middle then I had a cross beam as well as a hide on either side as well for them to go in um, I'd have to take that cross beam out and then take this I just, it was just too much faffing about for me um, um, I, I, I need stuff that's going to be quick and easy for me to use so that's why I do like to design a lot of stuff myself and make it myself just because I think I can actually make it better than, than what you can buy basically I'm not not slating anybody out there There's some really good products that are out there at the minute but for me I just like to make stuff myself and yeah I just think it does a better job um, so yeah that's that's how it looks and I, I actually needed to make this because I've got a couple of hatchlings that have shed and uh, they do actually need their own separate tubs now. So I'm going to get this set up, put them hatchlings in and um, yeah, you can see how it looks. So there's my two little water bowls, got them ready to go with the little deli cups inside. Um, I think they look really cool. Uh, I'm coming up with something different. Um, these feet do work, but I, I need something that's going to work well with the, uh, the coconut husk. Now I can just take them feet off and put them inside and they do fine. Um, but yeah, they, they can still knock them over because you think how close that is. A snake can get behind there, sort of tip that cup upwards if it wanted to and, and get underneath it. So I'm, I'm thinking of a way of putting this onto here so it attaches to this and it can't move. So that's something that's coming up in the future. So make sure you are subscribed, you don't want to miss that. 
what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this tub ready and uh, get them hatchlings over. And once I put these hatchlings over, you'll actually get a sneak peek of, of what I've hatched. So um, yeah, it's interesting. So just got some coconut here that I've got them ready. Now it's not completely dry. Um, I do like this to be slightly damp, but when I say damp, it's literally like, it's literally like a dribble of water. There's hardly anything on there. So um, I will leave this for like a week or so just to dry out once I've prepared it. Uh, this isn't any particular brand. Uh, I think at the minute I'm using some expensive stuff, or well, it's quite expensive. It's the um, Exoterra Cocoa Husk that I'm using. Just because the stuff that I normally use, uh, they don't have any of it at the minute. Um, I will be going over to a different substrate. I'm not sure which one. Uh, there, there is one that's been sold in my local store, which I might check out. But to be honest, I know everyone has their own views on substrate, and I don't really care. Um, the snake's just going everywhere, so I don't really care what where it comes from. I don't really care about the price of it. As long as it is sort of half decent, it's not going to affect the snakes. What does it matter? It's, it's like paper. You could use any paper for this, so um, same sort of thing. So next I'm going to get my water tubs in. Sort of going to smush them down, try and make sure there's no coconut underneath them. Uh, pour a little bit of coconut husk at the back. Sort of smush that down. Wedge them up like that, and that's basically it. Um, my OCD does kick in a bit. Might have to add like a couple of extra pieces here and there. Hate it, but can't help myself. So yeah, that's all I do. Um, I don't spray it down. I literally leave it as it is because um, I know the snakes are going to get some water out of that bowl and pour it in. So that's going to make the humidity go up anyway. But <clears throat> that's absolutely fantastic. Just like that, uh, you'll see after a couple of days. Um, when I post this, you'll, you'll probably see on the front of the tub there will be uh, some some condensation. But yeah, I'm really happy with that. So what I'm going to do is now I'm going to get the two snakes in there and show how it looks with them in. And here they are. Really love these two. So this is what I believe to be a leopard spider. Um, I don't think it's got Mojave in it. I don't think it's got Pastel in it. Uh, really, really love love this snake. Um, I believe it's female, I will need to double check, but I won't be keeping it unfortunately. Um, I was trying to hit a leopard killer bee, um, and yeah, this, this just wasn't it. So this one will be for sale at some point once it gets up to size, and here you can see peeking over is my banana clown. Um, the light is sort of blowing him out a bit color-wise. Um, he is a lot more orange on the side, but obviously because of the lights I use, it does sort of wash the color out a little bit, but I mean, even there, that the colours on his back, if I look through the camera and I look at him in real life, the colours on his back are identical, if not a little bit more orange, the purples are the same. Um, and yeah, the colours on the sides, he's just got a little bit more orange, and the same with his head as well, his head has got a lot more orange. But yeah, that's how they look in there. So you can see these are both sort of, uh, I believe my banana is at about sort of 85, 86 grams. Um, and this one is a little bit smaller. This is probably around sort of 65 grams. So um, they've got plenty of time in here to grow. It doesn't look like it, but they do actually have quite a lot of room in here for a hatchling. I think it's ideal, especially when you're trying to get them established and feeding. Um, having that small area does get them ready. And I'll probably keep them in here till they sort of get to about, I don't know, maybe 200 grams, maybe 250. And then once they're, they're sort of up to that size, um, I'll move them into the, the grow on the grow on tub. Um, I guess they could probably stay in there a little bit longer. Um, they don't like to sort of move about too much. They do prefer to be in sort of a, a tight space where they feel nice and secure and safe. Um, but yeah, that's that's how they look inside the tub. I'm really, really happy with that. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is obviously they can squeeze next door because I'm using those, those brackets where they're a little bit shorter. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna stick this on and then once they're stuck on, I'll be able to get them in the rack. So I finally got their walls filled up. I've got this little notch on the end here stuck on, which is absolutely awesome. Looks a little bit un untidy, but it's gonna be at the back of the tub, so I'm not too bothered. And this little guy here seems to think he's a green tree python, the way he's curled up. How cool is that? Never seen a bull python curl up like that before. Um, I hope he's not stuck to that, I don't think he is. Come on. Oh, he's actually holding on like a green tree python. That's so cool. Never seen that before. Come on, there you go. So yeah, that is that tub finished. The only thing I need to do is, oh God, no, come back, come back, come back. Get in there. Right, so yeah, as I was saying, 
uh, tub's all done. Um, the only thing I do need to do is I do need to put stuff on the front. Uh, again, I could just stick a piece of paper on there. I could wedge a piece of paper underneath, but I just don't like that. That's that's not for me. Um, so I'm do. Why have you got a bit of? Get that off. So I do need to change it and uh, put labels on the front. Um, I think I'm doing something that includes this drawer here. Uh, and then something that goes on each side. I'm not sure yet. It's it's a work in progress. Um, there's hundreds of things that I could change this so much if I wanted to. Like this is what I've done so far. You think it's a basic draw so far? I've modified that. I've now modified that central piece. Uh, the actual tubs themselves. So these tubs here, uh, up here, it's quite hard to see, but there's like these little ridges. It's not going to focus. There's like little little ridges and lips. Um, I have got some plastic that I need to stick up the top there so it makes it one solid piece so there's none of these so you can see these ridges here um, I want all them gone I want that all dead flat so I will be sticking a thin piece of acrylic to the top of this um, and that will actually make it a little bit more secure for the drawers because this plastic won't sit on sit up against that um, there will be a slight gap for the airflow but just enough so that it won't lift up for anything to get underneath it uh, not that this lifts up anyway because that's pretty secure um, so yeah I forgot what I was saying so yeah we've got that hole there we've got the divider the big tub's going to be um, changed a little bit um, I still need to add a hide section here so that's one of the big next things um, next thing is water bowl holders to find a way to attach it to this drawer so that they can't actually move about but can still come out easily and obviously I want to do something for the front so that I can just put all their information in like a little a little pad or a little booklet or something like that just so that it's all together um, just because I don't want I don't want to have it on my phone because half the time I don't have my phone with me out here um, and I don't want loads of bits of paper flying about either so that's that is the plan and do you think that's just this one little drawer I've got to do that for for that entire rack there um, and that's without when I actually build my own custom aluminium racks as well there's just so much coming um, egg boxes I'm going to give you a quick sneak peek of that um, just so you can see what the next video is going to be on but it's definitely going to be one to watch because it's it's basically dealing with the stuff that I've had this season so this is hopefully going to make it completely bomb proof so there's not going to be any issues for my next season so I'll quickly get that and give you a quick look okay so this is going to be a very very quick preview of what I've got you ready did you see it right that's all I'm going to show you because I do want this to be in the next video but um, yeah it is it is pretty snazzy can't show you too much because you I really want you to watch the next video just to see how much work went into this but I'm literally just waiting for one more thing to come through uh, we should be here in a couple of days and once that's here I'll be revealing my new egg box so that's gonna be the end of the video I hope you have enjoyed it um, that's my egg boxes that's coming um, it's gonna be really really interesting to see if they do work differently um, yeah, it's just because of the things I've had happen to me this season. I just want to try and eliminate as many of those things as possible. Um, so by using that new egg box, I think that's actually going to help. Um, we've seen the tubs now, so you've seen how I've done the dividers. If it's something you're interested in, then do let me know. Um, I'll see. I said at the beginning, it's tailored towards these boxes in particular. I can do custom sizes for other boxes, but cost-wise and, and measurements and things like that, it could be quite tricky so um, if you're willing to be patient work with me then it is something I can do for you but as I've said there's there's loads I need to do with these boxes I still need to make the hides I still need to make the little bowl holders so they can't get knocked over um, I still need to stick that bit of plastic to the top of these tubs just so the snakes can't get onto those ridged areas um, what else we've got oh yeah and also with the little holders at the front of the tubs that hold all the information because I don't want bits of paper and this and that flying everywhere so um, there's loads to come uh, the season is, is coming to an end now we've got no more clutches to cut um, I'm hoping there's a few girls that are still left to go um, I'm not hopeful but fingers crossed they do go because if they do then they're going to be some really important clutches for the next season um, so I will need those babies to get up to size and get ready to breed especially the males um, 
just to try and push those projects a little bit further. So that's come in. Um, I will be moving into my new space soon. I'm still working on it. It's, it's not easy renovating an old garage and replacing roof, redoing the wiring, insulation, board and all. It's just, I'm not recording it because it's just a lot of hard work and a lot of ag and it's just not worth showing basically. Um, this place is fine, but it'd be better to have my own place so I can actually go out there whenever I want and not sort of here and there. So yeah, that's coming. It's going to be well worth a watch. Got my new racks that I'm going to be working on soon, new incubator build. Um, that's going to be pretty decent there's gonna be so many gadgets on it just so I can control everything as much as possible um, yeah loads to come um, literally trying to find time to film with this is impossible so we've got loads of com uh, content coming up um, especially with all the stuff behind me I've got loads of hatchlings to show still loads of sort of updates on things that are going on um, I think I'm gonna have a couple of adult females up for sale I'm not 100% sure yet. I need to think ahead of my plans, but I think I've got two in particular that might be up for sale. So um, make sure you follow my Instagram and stuff because I will post anything for sale on there and also on my Wolf Market. So that's that's well worth a little browse. I've got a few bits on there as well. Um, so yeah, loads and loads of stuff coming up. Literally, so much stuff to do. I just don't have the time to film it. So bear with me and. Uh, there's a new roster that I'm working to at the minute, so I'm gonna have a little bit more free time weekend. So hopefully I can punch out a lot more content. But thank you for watching, thank you for subscribing. I really do appreciate it. Um, if you haven't done it already, send me your address, send me some stickers. I'll send some back to you because the sticker wall over there is filling up fast. I've literally got space for like another sort of four or five stickers, and then I'm gonna have to start a new sticker wall. So um, we're doing really well on that. I think I've got a couple I need to send out as well. That I'm running late on, but. Once all my stickers are gone, I'm going to be doing new stickers as well. Um, might have some merch coming out, sort of hats and, and t-shirts, maybe some hoodies. Uh, whether I'm going to be selling them or not, I don't know. Um, I want them to be more for the people that do actually support me. So, sort of, if you if you basically help me out in certain ways, then I will be selling sending stuff to you. Basically, win them in competitions, that sort of thing. Um, I don't really want to do it for the money side of it. I want to I want to do it for the people that generally do support me and, and follow me and are there for me so that's that's more important to me than just making money um, but yeah that's all going to be coming that's way down the line I've still got more designs to sort of put together and and prices and stuff like that to work out so yeah it's all coming so thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one these little nubbins that are hanging out over here like a little nipple um, can't say that.